Hello friends, welcome to Environmental Science. Under Unit 3 Environmental Pollution, in this video, we are going to see the definition, cause, effects and control measures of air pollution. A definition of uh, pollution. A pollution is the effect of undesirable change. Any undesirable changes in our uh, surroundings or uh, in our environment that have harmful effects on the plants, animals and human beings is known as the pollution and an average human being requires about 12 kilograms of air each day hence even a small concentration of pollutants in the air becomes more significant our types of pollutants from an ecological perspective the pollutants can be classified as follows the first one degradable pollutants or non persistent pollutants so these degradable pollutants can be uh, rapidly broken down by the natural processes example are the domestic sewages and uh, discarded vegetables um, which can be easily degraded by the natural processes and the second one the slowly degradable pollutants or the persistent pollutant which are and the pollutants that remain in the environment for uh, many years in an unchanged conditions so without the changes condition they remain in the environment for many years and they take several years for to uh, degrade, degrade. Uh, for example the ddt and most other plastics are uh, coming under the slowly degradable pollutants and then the third one is the non degradable pollutants and so those uh, non degradable pollutants cannot be degraded by the natural processes and uh, once they are released into the environment uh, it is very difficult to eradicate them and they will also continue to accumulate in the environment example the toxic elements like lead and mercury and now what is air pollution the world health organization defines air pollution as the presence of materials in the air in such concentration which are harmful to man and his environment and the other one is uh, the air pollution occurs due to the presence of undesirable solid or gaseous particles in the air that are harmful to human health and the environment. Now, primary pollutants. Uh, pollutants em emitted from uh, natural events and human activities such as uh, the volcanic eruptions, emission from vehicles, industries are called as the primary pollutants. And these, um, there are uh, five uh, primary um, pollutants are there and they uh, all together contribute about 90 percentage of the global air pollution and these are the carbon oxides uh, that is co and co2 and nitrogen oxides sulfur oxides and volatile organic compounds uh, which are mostly hydrocarbons and the uh, suspended particulate matter Next one is the secondary pollutants. Secondary pollutants are produced in the atmosphere when sudden chemical reactions, chemical reactions take place among the primary pollutants. So when sudden chemical reactions take place among the primary pollutants, secondary pollutants are produced. Example, the production of sulfuric acid, nitric acid and carbonic acid, etc. The causes of air pollution. Here, carbon monoxide is a toxic gas which is produced when the organic materials such as natural gas, coal, wood are incompletely burned. So here, burning is the cause. And then, vehicle or exhausts are the single largest source of carbon monoxide. And emissions from the automobile vehicles are the are mainly responsible for more than 80 percentage of the total air pollution and then sulfur oxides the so2 and so3 are produced when the coal and petroleum uh, products are burnt and nitrogen oxides are also found in the vehicular exhaust so here uh, burning uh, is the main uh, cause of, of uh, air pollution uh, next the hydrocarbons the hydrocarbons they either evaporate from evaporate from the fuel supplies or they are the remnants or the remains of the fuel that did not burn completely and when they combine with the rainwater 
uh, and they run into the surface water. So during the raining process, then these hydrocarbons combine with the water and they run as um, into the uh, surface water uh, and they pollute the surface. And the um, particulates, which are uh, the small pieces of uh, solid material, which are dispersed into the atmosphere. For example, the smoke particles from fires and the bits of uh, asbestos and the dust particles and the ash from the industries are the uh, particulate matters. And then these particulates can accumulate in the lungs and they interfere with the ability of the lungs to exchange gases. So the gases exchange will be uh, seriously affected by these particulate matters. Uh, lead is a major air pollutant that remains largely unmonitored and uh, which is emitted by um, the vehicles and the leaded petrol. Leaded petrol is the primary source of airborne uh, lead emissions uh, in uh, most of the Indian cities and um, the agricultural activities. During the agricultural activities, the spraying of, uh, spraying of insecticides and uh, weed sites um, also cause air pollution and these insecticides and weed sites when inhaled by inhaled by human being they create severe uh, problems to both animals and man uh, the industries like paper and pulp factories petroleum refineries fertilizer plants and steel industries and thermal uh, thermal power plants are the main sources of air pollution and these uh, industries add various harmful gases like the carbon monoxide, sulfur trioxide, nitrogen oxide and the, the hydrocarbons etc. into the atmosphere. And then the textile factories release the cotton dust into the air and then the pesticide and insecticide uh, producing industries are posing serious threat to the environment and the food processing industries and the tanneries emit offensive, that is un, uh, unpleasant uh, words into the uh, environment and wars. During uh, war and various uh, war related activities, the various forms of explosives are used and they pollute the air by releasing uh, various poisonous gases. Now, the effects of air pollution on living organisms. Here, the elderly people, infants, children, pregnant women, and people with heart diseases and asthma or other respiratory diseases are especially vulnerable to the air pollution. And here, um, the main pollutant is carbon monoxide. The exposure of carbon monoxide, um, exposure of carbon monoxide um, with a concentration of 0.001%. Uh, for several hours can cause the collapse, coma, and even uh, a condition of death. As the carbon monoxide remains attached to the hemoglobin in the blood for a long time. So when the carbon monoxide attaches with the hemoglobin, it is known as the carboxyhemoglobin. So the carboxyhemoglobin can remain in the um, attached with the blood for a long time. Hence, it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So in this condition, it will seriously affect the perception and the thinking process and it will slow down the reflexes and cause headache, drowsiness, dizziness and nausea. Next, the nitrogen oxides. The nitrogen oxides, especially the NO2, can irritate the lungs and aggravate asthma or chronic bronchitis and also contribute to the influenza or the common colds common colds and the suspended particles. The suspended particles aggravate, aggravate the bronchitis and asthma. Exposure to these suspended particles over a long period of time uh, damages the lung tissue and contribute to the development of chronic respiratory disease and cancer. And the many other um, volatile organic compounds such as the benzene and formaldehyde and the toxic uh, particulates uh, like lead and uh, cadmium can also cause uh, mutations and the reproductive problems or cancer. Effects of uh, air pollution on plants. Here, when some uh, gaseous pollutants enter the enter into the leaf pores, they damage the leaves of crop plants. 
so exposure of leaves to air pollutants interferes with the, the photosynthesis process and also the plant growth hence it reduces the nutrient uptake uptake and causes the leaves to turn yellow brown or sometimes they drop off altogether from the plant and at a higher concentration of the sulfur dioxide majority of the flower birds become stiff and hard and they fall from the plants before the flowering before it becomes a flower and the prolonged exposure to high levels of several air pollutants from the smelters and coal burning power plants and industrial units and cars and trucks can also damage the trees and other plants so the effects of air pollution on materials here the air pollutants break down the exterior paint on cars and houses they break down the exterior paint on cars and uh, houses and uh, several other um, materials and the air pollutants have uh, discolored the historical monuments historical buildings and marble statues etc like uh, taj mahal here the taj mahal is the well known example um, here the uh, very bright white marble of uh, taj mahal uh, is uh, discolored due to the air pollutants air pollutants okay and then the acid rain the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur when in the atmosphere the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur in the atmosphere when combined with the water droplets during the process of raining they fall as acid rain on the earth so this acid rain affects the human beings animals plants and also agriculture process and the acid rain also corrodes the historical monuments historic buildings and marble statues again taj mahal can be referred um, can be referred here here there are many parts of the taj mahal have been corroded by the um, acid rain activity a depletion of the ozone layer the ozone layer is affected by the cfc that is the chlorofluorocarbons and these uh, chlorofluorocarbons are the cfcs are extremely stable they are stable non flammable non toxic and uh, harmless to human beings to handle so hence based on these uh, very good properties of the uh, cfc it is used mainly um, in uh, many industrial applications like aerosols air conditioners refrigerators and fire extinguishers and many cans Uh, which give out foams and sprays that is uh, uh, the cans which are using uh, foams and sprays are uh, using the cfcs example the cans uh, containing perfumes and the cans containing the room fresheners etc and uh, the cfcs are also used in uh, making foams for mattresses and cushions disposable styrofoam cups and glasses and packaging material for insulation and cold storage units and uh, in order to uh, stop the depletion of ozone layer india has signed the montreal protocol in 1992 which aims to control the production and the consumption of ozone depleting depleting substances now the effects of ozone depletion on human health the ozone layer uh, works as an effective screen for ultraviolet light so the ozone layer filters the ultraviolet light and stops the ultraviolet light from reaching the earth otherwise the ultraviolet light will reach the earth and it will damage the human being um, for example um, the sunburn a cataract aging of the skin and skin cancer are caused by the increased ultraviolet radiation so if the ultraviolet radiation is not stopped by the ozone layer the human being beings how to face the Um, many risk and uh, it weakens the immune system by suppressing the resistance of the whole body to certain infections like the measles chicken pox and other viral diseases effects on climate the global warming the increase in the concentration of certain gases like the carbon dioxide nitrogen oxides methane cfcs and water vapor trap the heat near the earth surface which is known as the greenhouse effect and thus uh, 
increasing the temperature on the surface of the earth is known as the global warming. Here, the above mentioned gases are called as the greenhouse gases. When the concentration of these greenhouse gases increases, the heat on above the surface of the earth will be trapped above the earth. So, due to the trapping of the heat by these gases will lead to the increase of the temperature above the earth. So, these greenhouse gases trap the heat and thus the temperature of the earth is increasing is known as the global warming and the adverse effect of the global warming. When the uh, earth is getting warmer, with a warmer earth, the polar ice caps or the ice cubes or the iceberg will start melting and causing a rise in the ocean levels and flooding of coastal areas. And the coastal areas and islands will also disappear or submerge completely under the sea. So, the um, submerging of um, uh, coastal islands um, are likely to occur due to the melting of polar ice caps or ice cubes. And the rise in the temperature will also bring about a fall in the agricultural production. And this could bring about unwanted changes in the species of the natural plants, agricultural crops, insects, livestock and also among the microorganisms. Uh, other effects, the aesthetic loss. The dust and smoke spoils the beauty of uh, nature in many places, especially in uh, tourist places. And then the food protection. The ultraviolet radiation affects the process of uh, photosynthesis in plants and thus reduces the nutrient content and the growth of the plants. And the plant and animal planktons, which are the free-floating organisms of plant and animals, or damaged by the ultraviolet radiations. When the planktons are um, damaged and they are the um, they form the basis of marine food chain. So as the planktons form the basis of marine food chain, when they are affected, the production of fishes will also be affected. Now the control measures of air pollution. See, we have to develop a well-established system of uh, air quality monitoring and uh, putting a greater emphasis on pollution prevention rather than control. So, we have to um, prevent the pollution rather than control the pollution and reducing the usage of fossil fuels by uh, using public transport and carpooling, which is the sharing of uh, a car uh, by many more than uh, one person. So, the occupy a car, sharing a car um, for its maximum capacity is uh, known as carpooling and uh, then cycling and uh, walking to the nearby places. So, these are the judicious use of uh, fuels to reduce the usage of fossil fuels and then improving the quality of vehicle or fuel. So, the quality of vehicle or fuels has to be increased and at the same time, um, usage of uh, CNC, CNG powered vehicles have to be uh, encouraged. Uh, that is the compressed natural gas powered vehicles which are very popular in uh, Delhi and the increasing the usage of renewable energy and usage of electrical vehicles, usage of solar energy and wind energy have to be encouraged. And um, the following are the initiatives uh, taken by the government of India to control air pollution. And the first one, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act was legislated in the year 1981. And then the Central Pollution Control Board initiated its own National Ambient Air Quality Monitoring Program in the year 1985. And uh, to regulate the vehicle on pollution, the Central Motor Vehicles Act of 1939 was amended, amended again in the year 1989. So, these are some of the control methods of air pollution. So far in this video under environmental pollution, we have seen the definition, causes, effects and control methods of air pollution. Thank you.